हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस सेशन आई विल डिस्कस द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन विच हैव बिन आस्ड इन सिविल सर्विसेज प्रिलियम्स एग्जामिनेशन दीज क्वेश्चन बिलोंग टू फिजिकल जोग्राफी एंड द फर्स्ट पोर्शन विच आई विल कवर हेयर इज क्लाइमेटोलॉजी रिलेटेड टू वेजिटेशन और बायोडाइवर्सिटी The vegetation of savanna consists of grassland with scattered small trees, but extensive areas have no trees. Means the savanna vegetation is somewhat like this. Trees are very sparse, and there are large patches without any trees. Just grasses and shrubs are there. Grasses and small, small, you know, xerophytic. shrubs xerophytic shrubs means the shrubs which can tolerate dry long dry season correct this is the vegetation of savanna region the forest development in such areas is generally kept in check by one or more or a combination of same some conditions so what are the conditions which control or which prevent uh, densification of trees in this bio why grasses and shrubs are dominant and trees are very sparse what are the factors which arrest the growth of trees in this biome the first statement is burrowing animals and termites see burrowing animals and termites they enrich the soil they cause aeration of the soil they make soil more fertile so by making the soil fertile the burrowing animals termites they always support the growth of trees they do not hinder the growth of trees correct so this is statement is incorrect second is fire definitely this is correct statement always remember in savanna region or tropical grassland region there are long hot uh, sorry long and dry uh, uh, season and uh, short rainy season during long and dry season there is risk of wild fires very often the 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 uh, bush fires happen in these areas and these bush fires they control the growth of trees clear so frequent fire outbreaks during dry season especially during you know spring season that is one of the reason behind you know uh, very sparse trees uh, in this region because trees will easily catch the fire okay so that is tr uh, true third statement is grazing herbivores this is also true the grazing herbivores they mostly uproot the trees correct and they basically prevent the growth or expansion of trees in the area like elephant for example so elephants they uh, uh, promote the growth of grasses and they they arrest they prevent the growth of trees in the savanna biome because they uproot the trees and shrubs so that is correct the fourth is seasonal rainfall that is also true always remember the forest vegetation the tree vegetation is found in wet areas the areas where rainfall or moisture availability in the soil is sufficient to support the growth of trees in savanna biome the rain rainy season is very short and that's why moisture availability in the soil especially in dry season is not sufficient to support the tree species so this is the the another reason which arrest or which prevents growth of trees fifth is soil properties this is incorrect always remember in any grassland biome whether it is temperate grassland that is prairie pampas steppe or tropical grassland that is savanna correct in these grassland areas soil is fertile it has good amount of humus so for lack of trees or for limited growth of trees you cannot blame the soil soil is fertile the climatic conditions are not favorable you must have studied in ecology that ecological succession the growth of species in a region that is controlled by climate mainly rainfall and temperature so climatic conditions are not favorable for growth of trees soil is good soil is fertile correct so soil is not responsible for prevent uh, you know sparse trees in this bio so 2 3 4 these are the correct statements so the c is correct answer for question number 4 okay friends the next question is <coughs> consider the following statements jet streams occur in the northern hemisphere only friends jet streams are 
narrow bands of high speed winds which are found in upper troposphere and stratosphere. The jet streams or narrow bands of winds, high speed winds, they develop due to high temperature and pressure gradient which develops in frontal zone. Frontal zone means the zone where two contrast air masses converge. So, in upper parts of front because of high pressure gradient and because of you know his strong Coriolis force the jet streams develop. Jet streams are present in both hemispheres. There are two global scale jet streams. One is subtropical westerly jet stream which develops at around 30 degree latitude between Hadley cell and Ferrell cell. Hadley cell is the cell of atmospheric circulation in tropical areas. Ferrell cell is the atmospheric circulation in middle latitude areas. Between Hadley and Ferrell cell, subtropical westerly jet streams develop in both hemispheres, northern hemisphere as well as southern hemisphere. Similarly, there is one more jet stream which develops between Ferrell and polar cell. That jet stream is called as polar front jet stream or subpolar jet stream. Subpolar jet streams develop at around 60 to 65 degree latitudes in both hemispheres between feral cell and polar cell. So, jet streams develop in both hemispheres, correct? Only the two things are required for their formation. One, the temperature gradient should be high, which, which happens uh, in the frontal zone where two contrast air masses, cold polar and warm tropical air masses converge. And second thing which is required for growth uh, for formation of jet stream is geostrophy that is a strong Coriolis force which can make the winds parallel to isobars. Strong Coriolis force causes bending of the winds and uh, makes the winds parallel to isobars. Clear? So, this statement is incorrect. Second is only some cyclones develop an eye. Cyclone, you must be aware that is the area of low atmospheric pressure around which air spirals inward and upward, correct? And as air spirals upward, there is formation of clouds and rainfall. So, in all, the cyclone is a low pressure system which is characterized by strong winds and clouds which cause rainfall. There are two types of cyclones, tropical cyclones which generally develop between 5 to 25 degree latitudes that is in tropical areas over warm oceanic surface and second is mid latitude cyclones that is temperate cyclones they develop in middle latitude areas due to frontogenesis due to collision between polar and tropical air masses. Always remember I is the feature of mature tropical cyclones. When tropical cyclones get stronger, when wind speed in a tropical cyclone is you know more than 118 kilometers per hour, then a zone of subsidence of air develops at the center of cyclone and that is called as I. So, I is present only in mature tropical cyclones. It is generally absent in the tropical cyclone during their nascent stage or during their growth phase. Similarly, in temperate cyclones, I is generally absent. Sometimes when temperate cyclone is very strong, when wind speed in a temperate cyclone gets very strong, then I may develop in the temperate cyclone also. Clear? So, generally I is present in those tropical cyclones which are characterized by very strong winds. Strong winds when they spiral, you know centrifugal force is generated. That centrifugal force keeps the air away from the center and that central low pressure area that pulls the air from the top and that leads to formation of I. Clear? And due to sinking of air, I is characterized by you know cloudless uh, uh, weather, calm conditions. The sun will be clearly visible in the sky and temperature is highest in the I portion due to two reasons. One, due to cloudless sky in the I area, there is high insulation. And second thing, uh, because of release of latent heat, you know, a lot of latent heat is released due to condensation process. So, that is the explanation for I and weather associated with I. So, uh, this is correct statement, I is present only in some cyclones. Third is temperature inside the eye of a cyclone is nearly 10 degree Celsius lesser than the surrounding. This is incorrect statement as I told you, 
I, which is a cloudless zone, is surrounded by I wall, which is a cloudy zone. I wall is the zone of strong winds and thunderstorms, dark, dense clouds are there. And these clouds cause rainfall. So due to cloudy, rainy weather, the eye wall region has relatively lower temperature than the eye. It's not the eye which has lower temperature, but eye wall has lower temperature in comparison to eye. So this statement is also incorrect. So in this question, only second statement is correct. That's why answer will be C. C is the correct answer of this question. <coughs> There is one more question, sixth question. This question is again about, you know, apparent movement of sun. The question is, on 21st June, the sun first does not set below the horizon at the Arctic Circle. Means, as per this question, as per the first statement, sunset does not happen at Arctic Circle on 21st June. B does not set below the horizon at Antarctic circle means at Antarctic circle that is 66 and half degree south the sunset is not happening on 21st June. C sun shines vertically overhead at noon on equator on 21st June according to this statement sun shines vertically overhead at equator and D is shines vertically overhead at tropic of Capricorn. So, which one is correct? Let me explain through diagram. Imagine this is the earth's surface, this is equator, 0 degree latitude. I told you sun is vertical over tropic of cancer on 21st June. This is North Pole, this is South Pole. So, sunlight, the circle of light covers the earth's surface somewhat like this. This is the zone of illumination. The zone of light that extends, that fully covers, that fully covers the area north of Arctic Circle. This is Arctic Circle, that is 66 and half degree north. This entire area which lies north of Arctic Circle that is fully covered by circle of light. Because this entire area is fully covered by light that is why during rotation of earth sunset does not happen in this area neither at Arctic Circle nor in the areas north of Arctic Circle. Because the latitudes from Arctic Circle up to North Pole are fully covered by light that is why there is no effect of uh, rotation on availability of light. So, sunset does not happen here. Similarly, the circle of light is completely absent. The zone of illumination is completely absent in area south of Antarctic circle. Antarctic circle means 66 and half degree south. So, this is the completely dark zone. Okay. So, sunlight does not cover here means no sunrise happens here, no sunset happens here and sun is perpendicular at tropic of cancer. This is the situation on 21st June which is called as summer solstice. So, in this question what will be correct statement? Sun does not set below the horizon at Arctic Circle. You can clearly see the area at Arctic Circle and beyond it is fully covered with light. So, sunset does not happen. There will be continuous presence of sun for 24 hours or more than that. At Arctic Circle on 21st June there is longest day means sun is available for 24 hours. And in areas north of Arctic Circle, sun, sun rays are available continuously for more than 24 hours. Clear or not? So, this is correct statement. Other three are incorrect. You can clearly check. Sun does not set below uh, the horizon at Antarctic Circle. This is incorrect. In fact, sunrise does not happen in areas uh, uh, at Arctic, Antarctic Circle as well as south of Antarctic Circle. Sun does not shine vertically at equator on 21st June, it is vertical at tropic of Cancer. And see sun shines vertically overhead tropic of Capricorn, this is totally incorrect, tropic of Capricorn is 23 and half degree south. 
So, the sun is vertical at this location. So, first statement in this question is correct. So, question was quite simple. If you have knowledge about apparent movement of sun, seasonal shift of vertical sun, you can easily answer this question. Thank you.